Because I'm chosen. And I'm Valentina, and together we are Hymns and Metaphors. You're watching Outspoken with Hymns and Metaphors. Bringing, bringing the, the kingdom, kingdom to, to the, the culture. culture. Big shout out to WYTV7, Christian Broadcasters Network. Man, we are just blessed and thankful that they have seen our vision and they just want to put support behind us. And um, we would love if you would go and support them as well, support us um, in the network. You can donate to them. Did you know that? Did you know that you can give a donation to WITV7? Just log on to WITV7.org and click on donate. And um, any amount is possible. They are a nonprofit. So um, we would just love just to show that you are enjoying what you're hearing and um, just show as much support as you can. So today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, myself in general, um, <laughs> and that's the culture of today's music. Mm -hmm. And that, that includes, um, you know, secular music, uh, Christian, gospel, and CSH. And if you don't know what CSH is, that's Christian hip hop. And that's what I'm involved in. That's what I do as a Christian man. So uh, we really just want wanted to discuss music today because, you know, like we say, our goal is to bring the kingdom to the culture. And one of the really <laughs> big things in today's culture is music. I mean, I love music. Clearly, my husband loves music. I mean, he's, you know, in the music industry. Um, but there are a lot of things that are behind the scenes in music today. There are a lot of things that are happening in the culture that people need to be aware of. And so we just kind of want to shed a little bit of light on that today, right? Um, and again, this is just our, this is our opinion. Um, you know, we're not experts by any means, but we do hope that you take this as, um, we've prayed about this. We've asked the Holy Spirit to speak through us tonight. Um, so we really hope that, you know, you take this as wisdom um, and uh, a word from God. So with that being said, before we get into the actual topic of music, in today's culture, I want to give you a little bit of biblical background because we are a Christian podcast and we do work for the Christian Broadcasters Network. So we do want to talk a little bit about the Bible first. Um, and unfortunately, when we talk about the topic of music in today's culture, I have to give you a little bit of information about Satan. So this is for people who may or may not know this already, but Satan's name was Lucifer when he was an angel in heaven. And uh, the word Lucifer in Hebrew is Hillel. And the meaning of Hillel is brightness or the light bearer, um, or others refer to him as the morning star. Um, in Isaiah, uh, it speaks of, of how Lucifer was before him, he fell from heaven. And um, he, he speaks of him so highly he says, oh, day star, son of the morning, um, and how he wanted to ascend above heaven, and he wanted to be like the most high, which is how his pride and his unrighteousness is what really made him get kicked out of heaven in the first place and fall down to earth um, to, you know, where he resides today, which is on earth. Um, in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 28, Lucifer is also being spoken about um, and how he was like before the fall, before he was actually kicked out. And it says that he was an anointed cherub. Anointed cherub. A cherub is an angel, if you don't know what that word means. That he is the seal of perfection. The, that he is full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So you can see that by those terms that were used in God's word, that he was a leader in heaven. He was one of the, the higher up, that he was looked upon as um, beauty. I mean, God even says the, the, the perfect in beauty. Um, and when he fell, a lot of one third of the angels of heaven actually fell with him. Um, so, but let's bring it to the music side of it. Also in that same verse in Ezekiel, um, he, he makes assertions to that Lucifer was an angel whose purpose was involved in music. It says that in him was different instruments like the, the timbrel or the flutes and the pipes. Um, and so some scholars 
will say that he was the worshiper um, in heaven. But that's not really something that's actually spoke about in the Bible. So we're not going to sit here and confirm that. But we will say that something about music was part of him before his fall. So it makes sense to me that now that the enemy is on earth, that this thing of music that was part of him in heaven is now something that he uses. And that's one of his abilities or his strengths here um, on heaven to lure and manipulate this culture. Music and, and entertainment and the industry con controls a lot of the world out there. I mean, just think about it. The clothes that we wear, the style of, of clothing that we wear comes from entertainment. Um, think about when you hear music, um, your mood changes. You could hear an upbeat song, get crunk, get excited, or you could hear a real mellow, depressing song, and your mood, your mood changes with music. Um, think about how, how we act when we hear a certain song. There are some songs that could get us ready to fight somebody, or there are some songs that can just really calm our spirits and make us fall asleep even. Um, a lot of, especially like the young culture, they want to be entertainers. They want to be like those people on the screens and those people out there doing this music. So I say all that to say that just think about how much music is involved in the culture that we live in. Back to the Bible. In Revelations, it says that the devil is a deceiver and a liar. So that makes me think that he's using the, the culture of music to deceive us and to lie to us. So we must take care about what we put into our ears. Matthew 4.24 says, and he said to them, take care what you give your ear to. In the same measure as you give, you will get. Mm. Second Timothy 4.3 says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But wanting to have their ears tickled, oh, they want their ears tickled, will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires. So it's about getting our ears tickled, and we want, we want to hear what makes our flesh feel good. And the enemy knows that, and he's taking advantage of that. That's why we just have to. We just really have to watch what we listen to um, and just watch what we take in. Um, you know, me being a secular artist. Um, beforehand. I, beforehand. I used to be a secular artist. So it's a lot of things that people don't really know that comes with the music industry. And I mean, it, it could, it's, it's really deep. It can go even, it's going to, it could be deeper than this podcast and interview could even go i mean it's so much that comes with music it's scary um that goes down behind the scenes um a lot of demonic things a lot of um witchcraft um i mean i've even i've even researched and even heard you know from other artists and things that go on as far as within the label you know um they take they take like the masters you know, they do something with the masters and they might do some type of chanting or some type of uh, uh, conjuring of spirits in order to kind of have that song that, that's just continuous, this is repetitive in, in your mind, in your mind. You know, it's something that you always, you just end up hearing. You always end up it's just being, it's Has there ever been a song that you didn't really like when you first heard it, but you kept, you kept right. hearing yourself repeating right. it over and over and then eventually, oh, that's my jam, that's my jam. Right. But you didn't like it initially. Right. Hmm. Yeah, so it's just, it's just different things that, that go into the whole, you know, the music industry and everything that comes with it. I mean, even down to the type of engineers that they have mixing the music and engineering the music. They have certain engineers to a certain studio um, and they'll take that music and they'll, and they'll you know, do what they do. And kind of they kind of mess with the frequency and, and they mess with the levels of the music and that affects your your mood and it affects your, your, your uh just just your, your just your mood certain certain frequencies that they know how to put in within the music that that can affect you 
whether, you, whether you're up or whether you're down. Um, you know, and that, and that might be um, probably the reasons why, you know, you hear certain songs, you might be driving down the highway and you might hear a really upbeat song and all of a sudden you just want to speed. You just want to, you know, <laughs> weave in and out of traffic or um, like, like, like my wife mentioned, you know, certain songs you might hear that you just might want to just want to fight. You know, even down to the, you know, you think about the younger generation, you know, that's how they're pulling the younger generation in by they, they, they're promoting these artists that, you know, they talk about just murder and, and, and drugs, drugs and, and, and all of that and all of those things. And they're making it cool. They're making it cool to do those things. And, you know, um, if you don't have your head on straight, you get influenced by that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and I, and, and I can, I can, say this because you know like i said i was a secular artist so i was one of those artists that was talking about those things i mean i was involved in a lot of those things and i just wasn't rapping about it but you know i can you know i could speak on that um you know you listen to a certain song and you and you might think that you can go out there and be you know scarface or be <laughs> some type of big time you know uh um what's the what's the guy that went to jail What's his name? Oh, oh the, the Mexican guy. El Chapo. Did they get El Chapo hey, or something yeah. like that? You know or what I'm Escobar. saying? Hey. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's, music has a big influence and there's a lot of things that go on. And uh, it's, we just have to be careful of but just what we listen to and what we take in and what our spirit is. So. And, you know, a lot of what he's speaking to is the secular side of music. Right. Um, and he, you know, has a, like, like he said, he has a lot of knowledge about that because he was in that. Um, and there's a lot, like he said, there's a lot of stuff that we can't even talk about on this podcast that it goes deep. It goes really, really deep. And, um, you know, if this is something that interests you, send us a message because uh, we can send you some links to some more information. You know, if you really if you're really interested in this and you want to know more about this, he, he can send you some links on um, where to dig deeper. Um, but the thing that scares me is that I feel like this also can be something that's happening in the Christian side of music as well. Um, Christian music today, now don't get me wrong, because there are a lot of really true believers, people who are truly filled with the Holy Spirit that are putting out music today, um, wonderful music, really dope CHH Christian hip hop artists, um, putting out music to glorify God, spreading the gospel. Um, but what we want to talk about is to be mindful of the ones who are not doing it right or who are, who are walking that thin line of um, lukewarm against being really hot for God. Um, the thing is, there's a lot of Christian artists who are uh, compromising. And when I say compromising, I mean they are adding a mixture of something else that's not of God into God in order to build a bigger audience or in order to make more money. Um, let me give you an example. And again, this is just my opinion. I don't know this woman. She's a wonderful singer. Um, but I'm going to use the example of Tasha Cobb, for example, and many of you may have heard the song that she has. She did a song with Nicki Minaj. Now, here's my thing. Tasha Cobb, who's this wonderful worship artist, a gospel singer, she invites in a secular artist who, as many of you know, is out there shaking her butt, out there talking about doing this with a man and doing that with a man. Um, but then she puts her on this gospel track and she's talking about God and, you know, how, how God has blessed her and this and that. And what bothers me is that people who are looking at Christians already think that we're hypocrites. They already look at us as, oh, Christians are just hypocrites. You know, they don't, they can't really um, go with what they say you know they they try to follow the bible but they're out doing x y and z and they're telling us not to do it well how does that look when you have Nicki minaj on a gospel album who yesterday was just in the club drinking shots and and shaking her butt on somebody but today she's in the studio singing about god 
that's hypocritical to the hundredth degree. And that's turning people, not people like us who are already strong in our faith, but those people who is really the crowd that they're trying to touch, they're turning them further away from God, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? And, and I understand that she's trying to get people who would not normally listen to her. She's trying to get that crowd of people who, you know, maybe Nicki Minaj is, is fan base. She's trying to touch them and say, well, maybe if they hear her on my song, then they will hear God. I'm not going to say that that didn't happen because I'm not God. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it did happen to a couple people. And God says, if I do it for one, then that's enough, right? So again, maybe that was great. But what worries me is the fact that, number one, I don't really know if Nicki Minaj's crowd, her fan base, is even going to listen to Tasha Cobb's music. Because they're already over here in the world and they don't want to hear gospel music. And number two, the people who are Christians, the people who are trying to start that walk, they're going to hear this song with Nicki Minaj and think that it's okay to be talking about God one day, but then the next day go out and have shots at the club and have sex with your boyfriend. We're putting out the wrong message. This is not what the gospel says. That's one thing. Um, Another thing I kind of want to mention is, so uh, my husband and I yesterday went to the Unashamed tour that came to Charlotte, and dope, super dope. I mean, if, if, and if you don't know what the Unashamed tour is, it has, um, the headliner is Lecrae, Nick, Andy Mineo, uh, Trip Lee, KB, and then it's got, you know, some of the, the other artists in there too. Um, it was a really dope concert, and a lot of, I'll say 75% of the artists that were on the stage, they were speaking the gospel. They were talking about the Lord and his saving grace and how it's okay if you mess up that, you know, just give yourself over to God and he will, he will save you. Um, and it was a wonderful thing. We even had a little bit of worship music in there at one point. Um, but there was one part that I just want to talk about. And it was at the very beginning. And I'm, again, I'm not going to mention any names because it's not about that. but at the very beginning of the show, the very first artist that came out, he started playing the Swag and Surf song, you know, and Swag and Surf and Swag and Surf. Okay, now. You got to tell them the lyrics though. Right. That comes with it. Right. So I was <laughs> like, okay, I see he's trying to get the crowd going, you know, that little Swag Surf slide back and forth. I get that. But then, now, if you don't know the song, I'm going to help you out with it a little bit. But once the chorus part runs out and the actual verse, the chorus, the verse of the chorus comes on, the very first thing that it says, I'm on hypnotic, exotic, polo on my body, got a bad bee beside me and a friend right behind me. Okay, yes, I know this song because I was in the world. Okay, it was one of my jams. But he, but they did not only play the swag and surf and swag and surf, it went into the chorus. Now, they didn't play the words of the chorus, but if anybody knew that song in the world, even, even my husband said, I almost caught myself singing the verse because it's almost an automatic thing, like he said, was just mentioning. They get you to memorize these lines that are, that are not what you need to be saying. And I'm thinking to myself, we have children and teenagers and young adults in this. I mean, there was at least like 3,000 people in that building. And I wonder how many of them started singing that. Why did you do that? What was the purpose of the swag and surf song? And I mean, and then one of the headliners, he even mentioned like on a, a, a interview that he did that he doesn't talk about God when he's on stage. How are you a CHH artist? And your music talks about God, but you're not going to mention God when you're on the stage. Compromise. You're compromising because you are more worried about the sales that you can get because you are more worried about getting people to like you, getting people in that you think may need to hear. Maybe if I salt it up a little bit or I water it down a little bit, then more people will want to listen to it and I can save more souls that way. 
Jesus does not approve of that. He doesn't want a watered down word. We need to give them the gospel. If you're not giving them the gospel, then you're not giving them anything. Okay. And it's just about the performance. It's you know, about the performance. It's about the performance and, and just rocking and having fun, you know, and, and just and just not uh, connecting on that level, but just connecting on a level of, you know, I just want you to wave your hands. I want you to, you know what I'm saying? I want you to jump and, and, and rock with me and, and, and repeat my words and, you know what I'm saying? Just like that, that, that type of energy. But it, it wasn't God involved in it. It wasn't right. the Lord involved. Right. And again, we're not talking about the whole entire concert. Yeah, yeah not the whole entire concert. But there was some couple parts of it that I just yeah. looked like we're, I thought we were at a Christian event. So, yeah. But on a lighter note, that's I mean that's why I like uh you know I like it's a lot of CSH artists that are true CSH artists, yes. and I want to shout out my team, the Justice League. <laughs> you know. <laughs> J L and G, you know my guys, Cut Right and and, and I Kill and you know Warborn, Glasses, everybody, you know, um, you know they're they're true C H H artists, but another group I want to say or a label that I actually, um, you know I I really like is um, God Over Money, you know, super dope. God Over Money and 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 those artists um is Bizzle. Um, some of you might have heard of Bizzle, uh, Seven, Dayton, Dayton uh, uh, I think it's uh, Sailor, Sailor, Sailor out of the corner. The corner, yeah. And um, sure, I'm sure I'm missing a couple, but those yeah, are the yeah. heavy hitters. Yeah, yeah, but th th that's the top tier, like, those are the top tier CHH uh, label. Uh, so you got, like, God Over Money, you got, you know, Reach Records and all that. But I really respect God Over Money because, you know, Every single one of the artists, they don't ever compromise. Yeah. And and they have been consistent with just speaking the gospel and ministering yeah. through their music like since day one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like she's a big Bizzle fan. That's that's right? my homeboy. He don't know, but that's my homeboy. A big Bizzle <laughs> fan. You know, like I said, I was a secular artist, so I'm coming into CHA, so I wasn't, you know, really on uh, up on Bizzle like that. I didn't really know about Bizzle and, and um, you know Dayton and Seven and all those guys, you know, come coming into CHH, I only knew about the crack. Mm -hmm. So when she introduced, well, she didn't introduce me to Bizzle, but um, when she kind of put me up on some of Bizzle's earlier stuff, mm -hmm. you know, I, I realized that his his approach to the gospel back in what 2000, 2000s maybe, all the way up until now, has never changed. He's consistent. never come. It's, it's, it's consistent. Yeah. You know, and um, and and, and this, it's his whole label. It's yeah. his whole squad. Like yeah. everybody. I mean, seven. You know, seven. I think he he stopped. He stopped being the, doing the rapping thing and and wanted to do the ministering thing full time. And um, that's you know, the heart. Right. That's the heart. Right. And um, they they just they just they just don't compromise. Yeah. And all of their songs, they never compromise. Um. So, you know, I really look up to God Over Money and, and that whole squad, that whole camp and what they represent, you know. And I also, you know, I, I think about myself, you know. Um nope. I think about myself like I don't I don't I don't ever would I don't ever compromise my music for anybody or, or, or even when I was a secular artist, I never compromised my music. But as a Christian rapper, I don't compromise what I'm talking about. You know, I um I don't go into finding a, a, a really good record saying like, okay, well, I'm a, I, I want this to be the record that I choose because I, I want people to like it. I, I want to, no, I go into it saying like, Lord, what is it, what is it that you want me to, to say on this song? What is it that you want me to, to portray through, through my words? Um, you know, and I just let him do the work. And I, I feel like that's why my music kind of connects to people. Um, and no, I'm not on the level of Bizzle, I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not on that level. God of Money needs to come and check him out, though. But I'm just saying. I'm not on that level, <laughs> you know. But um, at the same time, you know, my, I, that's why I feel like my music is authentic. Um, and you can take something from it. Yeah. You know, you can take something from God of Money. You can take something from the Justice League. A lot of the Christian rappers now, you can't really, you don't really take anything away from it. It says, sound, it sounds like a watered down version of secular music. Mm -hmm. and, and and mind you, you know. I don't want it to come across like I'm, I'm, you know, like the ambassador or some type of uh, 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 
um, executive or anything like that, <laughs> but I, I was a secular artist, so I can hear. I can hear when you, you, you know, uh, a, a Christian rapper might come on a song and all he's talking about is, is you know, just the same stuff this a mainstream secular artist might be talking Conscious about. Conscious rappers, we right. call them. But he might drop a God, a God here and there. A God bomb. So now he's a Christian rapper. But a lot of secular artists might have a song about God on their, on their album. You know? God's plan. So, God's plan. Right. So all I'm trying to say is, is that, you know, compromising is a no-go. And, you know, I really respect, that's why I respect God over money. And, um, yeah. and, and that's really, that's really the main message that we're trying to come across with today is, um, don't compromise in your own life. Like, even if you're not a, a, a artist, a singer or a rapper or even a poet like myself, um, you don't want to compromise by what you're allowing to be put into your ears. Because what you don't realize is that the enemy has taken control of that. Um, and you can't allow that. You have to be careful to what you allow into your ears because then it goes through your ears and it gets in your brain and it gets into your heart. And, and it starts to control who you are. And you don't even know it. You don't even realize that this is happening. Um, and so just to wrap everything up, um, we just want to tell you, don't let your life have mixture. Don't let, um, don't let there be mixture in your ears. Don't let there be mixture in your house, your kids. Like, you have to watch what your kids are listening to. Because today's culture, that's what's out there. That's what they want to hear. I'm a teacher. So, I mean, those middle school kids, thats they know the words of this rap song talking about drugs and sex more than they know the answers to the history test or to the multiplication test. Like, you know what I'm saying? So you really have to be conscious of what your kids are listening to because that that changes them. And uh, we just want to do a real quick plug because um, we were talking about not having mixture. And this book right here, this is from our pastor. Uh, John Lofton is our pastor here in Indian Trail at Covenant Community Church. Shout out Covenant mm-hmm. Community C3. Woo woo. We love y'all. But really, um, we just want to put this book out there because it talks about not having mixture in your life, not only about music, but just in everything. It says exposing the power of being distinctly different. That's what it is. You have to be different today because no one else is going to do it. You have to do it. You have to make the choice to put the right stuff into your ears and to believe that the enemy could be in control of the things that are coming into your ears. The prince of the air, as they call it. You know what I'm saying? Like he he wants to have control and he knows that music and entertainment is the way to do that. We can't be lukewarm. You can't be praising God on Sunday and then... um, talking about jumping up in the club and smoking a blunt, you know, while you're riding in your car listening to Snoop Dogg. I mean, you know, if, if, no, if it's Snoop Dogg, he's super dope too, but I'm just saying, like, you have to make a decision. You can't be lukewarm. You have to either be hot or cold. The Bible says, if you are lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. The goal of a Christian is to get to heaven. And it's not an easy thing. It's not just, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, as long as I believe, I don't think that's it. I don't think it's just if you believe. I think you have to have a changed heart. I think you have to um, allow the Holy Spirit into your life and let him move things in your life. And you can't be like your old self and just do what you used to do. Yeah. Oh, oh, one more thing before we... I also want to plug um, this uh, YouTube sermon. I, When I was in Atlanta, I went to Victory World Church. Shout out um, Victory World Church. But there is a sermon by Montel Jordan. And if you know who Montel Jordan is, he is a uh, ex-secular R&B artist who is now the praise and worship leader of Victory World Church. But he does a sermon about um, the power of music. And it's basically talking about a lot of the stuff that um, that I mentioned about the biblical references about it. And, you know, if, if this is something that you're interested in, I employ you to go and check out that. Just search YouTube, The Power of Music, Victory World Church, and you'll find it. It'll be there. Again, um, like I said, we're about to wrap this up. But at the end of the day, we aren't judging anyone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to come off. 
like we're better than anybody else or anything like that. Today's podcast was just um this healthy conversation, yeah. you know, coming from artists, you know, a Christian poet and a, and a Christian rapper, yeah. you know, and the one I was formerly a secular artist. Yeah. So um yeah, that, that's that's all this was, just healthy conversation, maybe enlighten some people who don't know about um maybe the background of Lucifer and his his connection with music and you know the things that go on behind the music industry and a lot of things that people don't know and um yeah so yeah and so we really hope that you hear our hearts tonight yeah. and um you know that that you understand that like like he said we're not out here pointing fingers at anybody right. and saying you know he shouldn't have done this and right. she shouldn't have done that um right. but we just we just really this is just wanting to turn that little switch on in your head like oh maybe maybe she's right maybe she shouldn't be doing this let me turn my station a little bit um that's all we're asking for is you know just to give you a little bit of wisdom and a little bit of the bible and um we really hope that you enjoyed it again shout out to wytv7 we love you guys um and again as we always promise we have one of chosen songs tonight to play hey we were talking about music so why wouldn't we play one of his songs at the end yeah. um we really hope you enjoy it. what's the name of the song baby worry about none worry about none you gotta worry about none hey you gotta worry about none it's one of my favorite songs um but it's just an example of how we're not compromising we're not gonna we're not gonna let what the world says influence what we're trying to say putting the gospel out there right. bringing the kingdom to the culture. <laughs> we love y'all. God bless you. Until next time. Bye. Hey. Matthew chapter 6, verse 34 says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, but tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So, with that being said, the enemy is here to put fear in our hearts. Depression make us feel like we're stressed out. Worrying about things we have no control over. But I'm here today to tell you, you ain't gotta worry about nothing. Yeah, let me talk to you. We ain't gotta worry about nothing. You 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 see it all, you understand. You ain't gotta worry about nothing. It's on the court and to his plan. You ain't gotta worry about nothing. 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 He sees it all, he understands It's all according to his plans You ain't gotta worry about nothing Listen, you ain't gotta worry about a thing, no Look to the most, how a thing seem low He spent the most time looking for a hero But he was right there, let me show you what I mean now Young in the street, stuck to the G-code But I chose him instead of serving kilos Now I ain't never gotta worry about a CO Cause on tracks, he made me a piece, man The point I'm trying to make Is you ain't gotta worry about him, just have faith Whatever you do, do you gonna make it? It's kinda funny, just watch, it's never late Keep praying the change is coming soon, but he'll never leave you all alone. Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. He's day has enough trouble, love is so. You ain't gotta worry about none of some scripture so you can come.